India is industrially more developed than many less fortunate countries and is reckoned as the seventh or eighth among the world's industrial nations. But this arithmetical distinction cannot conceal the poverty of the great majority of our people. To remove this poverty by greater production, more equitable distribution, better education and better health is the paramount problem and the most pressing task before us and we are determined to accomplish it. Where freedom is menaced or justice threatened or where aggression takes place, we cannot be and shall not be neutral. What we plead for and endeavor to practice in our own imperfect way is a binding faith in peace and an unfailing endeavor of thought and action to ensure it. The great democracy of the United States of America will, I feel sure, understand and appreciate our approach to life's problems because it could not have any other aim or a different ideal. Friendship and cooperation between our two countries are therefore natural. I stand here to offer both in the pursuit of justice, liberty and peace. Mr. Gandhi addresses a special joint session of the United States Congress. The speech he delivers will win praise for its frankness and wit. In his opening remarks, the Prime Minister refers to a similar event from an earlier time. Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, distinguished members of the U.S. Senate and House of Representatives, 36 years ago, my grandfather, Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of Free India, stood here, the highest forum of the great democracy of the United States of America, to convey the greetings of the people of India and to offer friendship and cooperation in the pursuit of justice, liberty and peace. This morning, I have the honor to reaffirm that commitment. I am deeply conscious of the honor you have done me in giving me an opportunity to address this joint meeting. I know that this is an expression of your regard for India, our people, our parliament. On their behalf, I thank you. The ties that bind our two people are many. Some are the curiosities of history. You gained your independence as we were losing ours and many of the people involved were the same. We wish that Eli Hugh had founded a university for us instead of being governor of Madras and that Lord Cornwallis had surrendered in Delhi rather than to George Washington. <laughs> it was Indian tea that stimulated your independence movement. <laughs> I have no doubt that this visit will help to bring about greater understanding between our countries. I am deeply touched by the warm welcome I have received. My talks with President Reagan and his colleagues have been most valuable and have been characterized by open-mindedness and receptivity. I have been elected Prime Minister of India at a time 
when our nation stands poised for a new surge of growth. Our leaders in the past 30 years have established firm foundations on which we now have to build. India is an old country, but a young nation. And like the young everywhere, we are impatient. I am young, and I too have a dream. I dream of an India strong, independent, self-reliant, and in the forefront and the front rank of the nations of the world in the service of mankind. I am committed to realizing that dream through dedication, hard work, and the collective determination of our people. I thank you once again for the opportunity of sharing my thoughts with you. Thank you. For the first time, an Indian Prime Minister was accorded a standing ovation by both houses of the Congress. Clearly, the Americans were bowled over by India Raji. In a statement issued at the end of his visit, the Prime Minister and the President reaffirmed their faith in the democratic process, reviewed the major issues reflecting peace, security, and economic development, and agreed that their two governments would remain in close touch to enhance their mutual understanding. The warmth in the relationship between these two great nations is evident in the meetings between their two leaders, meetings which show that new beginnings based on common ideas can lead to friendship and mutual respect.